It was a twin attack on KTN Channel and the standard newspaper printing press along Likoni Road. A Nairobi night attack on the media that sent shockwaves worldwide. Who were behind the move and why? This is the untold story. My name is Duncan Haimba. On the night of Wednesday, 1st of March 2006 and into the wee hours of Thursday morning on 2nd of March, a covert, surprise and shocking raid by hired international mercenaries and a lethal police hit squad on the standard group occurred. The country's oldest and bold newspaper, The Standard, together with her authoritative news channel, KTN, were viciously attacked. According to Shina Makenangondi, who was a video editor at KTN then, it was heading to 11 p.m. Together with other staff members who had finished their late night shift, they were downstairs at the IM building waiting for transportation to their respective estates when it all happened. So I was sitting downstairs at IM building downstairs waiting for the vehicle. And all of a sudden I remember seeing through the glass doors people just scampering and cars getting off the road. So just the limited that limited view that I had, I could just see, you know, twilight girls running, cars speeding off. So, I mean, didn't think anything of it up until this multitude of masked guys in reflective jackets walked in. They were in orange, orange, yeah, orange reflective jackets. Yeah, so came, came up to us, asked us for our IDs, our work IDs, our phones. Makena says it was a chilling experience. It was a season where cases of people going missing, extrajudicial killings were rampant. She feared the worst might happen. Uh, because it was the period that there had been a lot of, uh, you know, people going missing, people being killed, a lot of mystery around a lot of things like that, my first thought was, oh my goodness, my body's going to be found violated and dumped somewhere in some forest. Honestly, I have to say, because these are people, they're not talking to you. The one gentleman who spoke, I remember speaking to, to us, and he'd worn a, um, and he had a baraclova, you call it, yeah? And he'd worn a pair of latex gloves. The first guy I remember speaking to us, because that time I had some Egyptian friends, and I remember telling the media the guy had an Egyptian accent. So being the only woman, first you think you're dealing with foreigners, you're dealing with people who don't their identities known. They've taken essentially what is your, you know, your, your, you know, your work, any way of communication or anything. So first thought is that we were dying. That was the day. The heavily hooded gang confiscated phones from all staff members to cut off communication. The victims of that raid remained under siege for at least six hours. After that, the group split, because it was a fairly big group. I think I'd put them on average at 40 or 30 people. So some went upstairs, left us down. And uh, then, then um, well, the group that was left behind took us to the reception area, the one just downstairs at i &M, because we were near the escalator that leads up to the bank. Um, uh, gathered us there, really not telling us anything. Uh, went up, of course, came down with some of our other colleagues we later found out had been beaten up and harassed, and now put us into into vehicles. So they came in, they brought in, I remember Njuguna uh, from Transmission, and brought them in with computers, with, you know, all, all forms of, you know, where they thought they could get information from, and all put us all in the back, drove us to, drove us to Nairobi area police station, Parked us there for over an hour, still not telling us anything. They'd even gotten to the point where they were processing us for, for arrest to put us in the cells. Had taken off one shoe, the, the whole thing. And then just before they put us in, 
one of the cops now who came who came and he had one of the more senior cops Central. yeah uh, came and said that he had gotten a call and we were to be released we wound up coming walking back to INM from Central Police Station that they later drove us to at around 5 a.m. Kipko H. Tanui was then deputy managing editor of the Standard Daily. The raid occurred less than two hours after he had left the office. In all the span of about uh, over two decades that I've been in the newsroom, I've never experienced that kind of uh, state attack uh, in our premises where I worked. Uh, I was the I was then uh, the deputy manage, managing editor of the Standard Daily. The managing editor was Pamela Sitoni, now with the East African in the nation, across the Nation Media Group. And we had produced, remember, that was the season that uh, exams had been released two days before for Form 4 students. So we had produced a paper uh, with the headline Champion Speak, which was really the dreams and aspirations of the star candidates. We sought out them. You went, what did you want to be and what was the secret of your success? So most of them talked about being, they want to be doctors, pilots, uh, actuarial scientists, accountants, engineers. And that's the headline we had. Very innocent. Young Kenyan children speaking with a name on page one and the marks they got and what they, had dreamed, they, had, they dreamed. To, uh, to be in life. And we finished with that paper and went home. Tanui says he was scared. Immediately he received a distress call. The office was under attack. It is the standard newspaper that was targeted and had to be intercepted at the printing press to ensure no single copy hit the streets that morning. At night we were woken up by uh, people in the office that were working late and people at the machine room uh, saying we have been attacked. And upon inquiry, because we didn't know it could be a coup, you don't just move out. So we had to make a lot of calls to know. Remember the attackers uh, were dressed in palaclavas. They were hooded. And they say they are police and they don't show you documents. So we were very apprehensive. What kind of scenario are you walking into? Who are you going to face? Who are these people who have the temerity to attack two installations of the media at the same time? I and them uh, and Likone Road. And in Likone Road, they were taking the newspapers and burning. Oblivious, uh, blind even to the fact that the headline was so innocent. Apparently, they had been told we had a very lethal, uh, that's what we cut that letter from our own intelligence, that we had a very lethal headline against the first family, then President Kibaki. And that had something to do with either, uh, I don't know whether it's a, a criminal connection, either with the, within his team or in the whole institution of presidents. But there was nothing like that. In fact, the back story had just a little story on Anglo Listen and uh, something on Saitoti. But it was a paper that you'd, I wish that paper could be put in some national museum. It was about our children and the exams and what they expected to do. After thorough consultations and a flurry of calls among the rank and file within the standard group, it was agreed that all meet at the office already under siege. He was the first one to arrive at INDEM. It was when I came in, the first thing that happened was the security team, our internal security team were taking uh, accounts of the people because the raid had taken place. They were taking accounts of what had happened from the staff that were on duty that night. Then it dawned to me that I actually don't need to interview them. I can also take notes and make it our story because it was real narration of what happened just hours after it took place. And uh, as fate would have it, have it, you know, when they attacked the standard, they were, were unaware, they, they got confused about two things. One is they knew very well that we'd print the paper separately. So that's why they dispatched another team there. But they were unaware that the CCTV cameras are twofold. There's one run by the INM, because we are tenants, INM management, which is what they smashed. But they didn't see 
they thought they had finished with the lower floors, but at the sixth floor, uh, the fifth floor, which was the reception or sixth floor, they were real time recording. And that is what we were able to give to CNN and the rest of the world to see. Recorded, caught in the act. That is what salvaged and gave evidence of who were attacking us. It will remain a mystery. That's when now we're able to analyze and see that there were white people involved. Dominic Wabala was then a crime and investigative writer with the Daily Nation. He had just arrived home around midnight when he was informed about the standard attack. He was the first journalist to arrive at the printing press along Likoni Road that dreadful night. I found a lot of activity and I saw people I knew, cops. I had interacted with over a long time, uh, including having Yamachoma and all that with. So I assumed uh, they were on the assignment, I was on mine and everything would be fine. But uh, as uh, I was uh, watching and recording the events that were unfolding, the most surprising thing is that somebody I've known for a very long time cocked a gun at me and uh, was inquiring from his boss, who I also knew, what I was doing there. And uh, they ordered me to move further away from, uh, from uh, the, the premises where they were, they were, the, the newspapers were now, piles of newspapers were, were being burned. The seasoned journalist corroborates Kipkoech Tanui's position. I looked at the paper and I didn't see anything alarming that would have caused uh, uh, the government to clamp down on, 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 on standard. So what could have led to that Wednesday night commando raid on standard group flagship brands? There were three of our writers who had been arrested for writing a story about President Kibaki meeting with Kalonzo. And uh, one was the Honorable Ayub Sabula, who was our writer, now is a uh, member for Lugari, second term. The other was Denis Onyango, the spokesman of uh, Raila Odinga. And the other was Chacha Mwita, one of Kenya's most uh, eminent uh, journalists and uh, editors. You know that. So they had been taken. And remember, even that, that, that had, was a build up of the tensions between the Standard and the Kibaki administration. So, happened to be the main writer of that story. Sources from State House hinted to me that there was a meeting between Kibaki and Kalonzo and his people, the two teams, Kalonzo's team and uh, Kibaki's team. They agreed you go and run on your own and we'll ensure that you get the vice president slots because that was a, a, a formality under the old constitution because the old con constitution did not provide room for a running mate or uh, a deputy uh, president. Uh, the president uh, was assumed to be the overall uh, boss who will appoint now his uh, vice president after the election. So uh, we did that story. Dennis Onyango was on the desk, uh, the lead editor that day. Then uh, the chief editor was uh, Chacha Mita. So I did the story on a Saturday. The story was a headline on Sunday. Kalonzo to be named vice president when Kibaki wins election. So it brought so many jitters. I was called by a CAD from Central Police Station and he instructed me, the CAD director at that time was Joseph Kamau, who wanted to see me. I told them, me, I'm not a crime reporter. Why should I see the CAD director? What business do I have to do with the CAD director? I'm not a crime reporter, I'm a political writer. Uh, later on, I was told you're required in Nairobi because they monitored my phone where it was. I was in Mumias. So I was told to come back in Nairobi. When I landed, I called the same number. I said, I've landed at JKA. That is in 2006. Uh, we were told, I was told, tomorrow, the following day, that was Monday, I should report to Central Police Station. What followed was day long intense grilling at Nairobi's Central Police Station. This is KTN News.
watching. There's something for everyone at Bet Team. Bet Team. Cheza nasi. Bet nasi. Radio Maisha Super Rumanite. Yoka Quadra. Ijuma hi. Dania de Carnivo, Nairobi. Radio Maisha in Akuletea. Super Rumanite. Adolfo Mote Bachina Mina. Alarme Mokorele no. Furaia, mziki wa rumba kutoka 6,500 dancing styles Yani, rumba Japan Le grand DJ Matozi Bor Na DJ Wati Super Rumba Night Usiku wa midundo mizito mizito Ya rumba Radio Maisha ila kupatia fursa ya kulishindia tikiti Za kingilio Tukutane The Carnival Ijuma hii Tare mbili machi This is rumba at its best This is Radio Maisha Tukumbele Pamuya. And finally, a pilgrimage to the Holy Land is incomplete without stepping in Jordan. This is the land of religions. We are talking about the Exodus of Moses, we are talking about uh, uh, Jesus, and we are talking about Islam and Muhammad. Also in Jordan, we have the mosaic map, which offers useful and unusual guide to the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is actually the city of God, the city of peace, Salem. We as Muslims, we believe that uh, Jerusalem belongs to the Muslims because it was uh, established by Prophet Abraham. Christians are coming, Muslims are coming to visit the Temple Mount and other places. We don't restrict anybody because Jerusalem is our capital. Okay. Still in Jerusalem, the Western Wall, also known as the Wailing Wall. This and much more in our last episode across Holy City. <laughs> This is KTN News. All eyes were on the Standard Group following the raid. A special edition of the Daily Nation was hurriedly churned out. The media was under attack. The good thing is, other media houses also came in. And that gave us an assurance. I, when we were doing because our machines thought that the transmission had been cannibalized. At the printing plant, they had been cannibalized, so they were not working. One of the most delightful moments was when the, 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 the nation media group gave us a promise that if you are unable to reach you, to print your paper, we will print for you. I've never seen that kind of solidarity. The raid had been conducted Standard newspaper copies set ablaze in entirety. KTN Channel switched off. The million dollar question was who had sanctioned the brutal raid and why. While we are still at the police station in, uh, in, uh, in Kileleshwa, uh, Honre Bakaranga was the public service minister, tried to ask Kibaki. Kibaki was launching an event at KCC. Why are you looking at these journalists in the cells? Because it's against the freedom of the media, and the, the story is not a, a criminal story. It does not portray government negatively. These are their own feelings. Kibaki ignored. The very evening, Michuki, who was the internal security minister, issued a statement saying that if you rattle a snake, be ready to be beaten. Yes. We know 
Are you too serious? Yes. And I'm telling you, when, when people, when you rattle a snake, you must be prepared to be bitten. Is it a desperate step for the government? Stop pushing. That is the day we, I knew we were in trouble now. What have we rattled? Close circuit television cameras that were not smashed luckily revealed the individuals. Despite having balaclavas, at least one could see the presence of foreigners who seemed to be leading the onslaught. Two days later on 4th March, Raila Odinga, then Langata member of parliament, at that time, one of the renegade MPs within NAC who had teamed up with Uhuru Kenyatta's led official opposition party, KANU, convened a news conference. The Russian embassy has no, even no business making a statement. Because mercenaries are never recruited from governments. Mercenaries are mercenaries. They are soldiers on hire. But it was just a matter of time. Years later, KTN's investigative team tracked down one of the mercenaries involved who made the confession. Were you part of the KTN raid? Who organized the entire thing? Were you part of the leading, KTN raid? I was, I was leading the raid. We, we went, we do the uh, first look, then uh, we plan in my house around the house. Then we call the boys for the briefing. We collect the mobiles from the boys. We distribute the weapons for only self-defense. And we execute the plan. It was information we received that after that article of the Kibaki and Colonzo secret meetings, so it was information that KTN is having articles on the computers ready to publish. We have taken to, personally, we have taken computers to this KICC conference hall where the Alfred Mutua. Uh, as to whether it was expected, we never expected such a thing. It was criminal in nature. One thing that uh, give credit where it's due is that at least in his moment of anger, the then security minister, uh, John Mishuki, declared it was a government operation. And he said, when you rattle a snake, you should be prepared to be bitten by it. That gave us a sense of what was actually happening. But in truth, we would not have known. And uh, years later, when I reflect and I say, uh, it's, it's as if what was manifesting itself is this, the old saying that uh, truth is like a mole. You bury it in one corner of the chamber, it emerges in the other. Because it didn't need a lot of investigation. It just emerged. Even the analysis of the pictures that in the, in, among the hooded people were some white people. Kenyans later came to know at the Commission of Inquiry that indeed there are people who had been brought in, mercenary from either uh, Armenia or some of those uh, countries, uh, some said Russians. Nobody really knows who they were. The former Langata MP was vindicated, having been the first one to blow the whistle. These two gentlemen were driven in two GK vehicles with two outriders. And though they were escorted to the airport like heads of state. They entered the airport through the first gate before Terminal 1. That's how they entered the airport inside. Now the statement that was read to the press there was prepared in Madame Naomi Sidi's office. However, the government's pin doctor and spokesman at that time, Dr. Alfred Mutua, was quick to dismiss Raila Odinga. If we were, if we, we have to go into the standard, why would we need foreigners to do that? I mean, it's not like a high level uh, operation to flush out, you know what I mean? People that we cannot or something like that. I mean, we have here the Kenya Army, we've got the Kenya Air Force, we've got the military police, we've got the Kenya Navy, we've got the regular police with their wings of the GSU, you know, we've got uh, the special record squad, we've got uh, special CID 
uh, teams to do work. We've got the administration police. We've got the anti-stock theft unit. We even have the National Youth Service. Why would we need foreigners just to walk into standard newspaper? You know what I mean? We've talked about the kind of people who are for dinner. I was surprised to pick up a new stadium on a road block. When I came to Sireni in a Fungulio. Why? So the kitu, the kitu, na wako na radio, radio calls. In a Fungulio Capisa, easy barriers in a Yaka Kando and a pit. I mean, you go and endeavor Moja in Kwambe. When they came here, I didn't expect them to have a car, so it was my car which went to pick them up. and. Once or twice I took them for dinner, or may maybe more. Uh, at the same time, they used to call me and said, please, if I could send my car, uh, they wanted to go somewhere. And in between that time, when they decided to come, and uh, they, when they said they want to come and stay in Nairobi, uh, they asked me if, they, if I could look for a good car for them. Surprisingly, the dreaded raid was conducted when police commissioner at that time, Major General Retired Hussein Ali, was in seashells for official duties. It would later emerge that he was kept in the dark as the raid was plotted and executed. Upon arrival, his shock was evident. I'm not aware about any other uh, raid on Friday or any other day. So I cannot comment on that one at all. Were you aware of the first one? Uh, suffice it to say that no. Take the pictures, take, this, take, take this guy's picture. They are hired. Why yeah. you come here? Do you have any warrant? Where is your warrant? Who pay you to come here? A confirmation that the two mercenaries had connections with powerful individuals in the government manifested itself when an order by then police commissioner to have them arrested was overruled. Senior police officers directed to arrest them were chased away by the same people they wanted to arrest. For the staff at the Standard Media, it was a most terrifying moment. Five in the morning, we are talking of almost uh, six hours of uh, siege. In the end, you, you are the only lady, and then you are being uh, taken from point A, point B, point C. Were you crying at any moment? Unfortunately, I wasn't. <laughs> I, I didn't cry, but I know I felt there was this burden of sadness. I guess just not for me. I was looking at, I was probably one of the younger in the group. I had fathers around me, you know. I had, I had people who fend for their families. There's so much uncertainty about what these people could do to us. So after Michuki said, if you rattle a snake, be ready to be beaten, we thought we would be charged on Wednesday, the following day. Now, because now we know our mistake, because we rattled a snake, a snake. But we went further to stay in the police station for another five days, just doing nothing. Visitors visiting us, we asked, what are preferred charges against us? Nothing. After seven, a total of seven days, we are taken to Kibera police station, uh, Kibera cells. And Kibera cells, they charged us with publishing, I think, alarming article. I don't know if it was alarming in what sense. Alarming article. After there, we, are, we, are, we, were, we, were, we were discharged on a, a bond, which was paid by the standard group. Then. Uh, during the mention of the case now, they just, the state withdrew. But there was another question. It was the standard newspaper that was the target. Why was KTN Channel switched off for 13 hours? Amid all the shenanigans, only one thing saved the day for the standard group, the evidence. Duncan Hemba for The Untold Story.